Ah, Emiliuccio, buonasera. Allora, buonasera. Hello, hello, hello. hello everybody, hello everybody. Wow, we are already quite a lot. Ciao Seppi, Seppi. Seppi, <laughs> how are you? Did you see did you see the pre questions the the pre show questions Yes 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 I see that uh, many voted for you but uh, no, no, please still... scroll 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 down Sebastian. Yes. scroll still, down Let me tell you let me tell you still 15% percent of the votes is quite nice I like it <laughs> <laughs> You got only 15% my friend I got double your score <laughs> Okay you're young come on Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, anyway, anyway, many said, come on, this is not fair. <laughs> this is not fair, of course. <laughs> so, how are you, how, how are you, my friends? Are you okay uh, connecting from all over the world? Today we have a very nice episode, number 17, uh, with a very nice uh, guest that we will introduce in a moment after the question of the week, which is the following. Ah, do you use the Moscopy for hair and scalp disorders? Yes, no, sometimes. Hey, JP, I don't like the question of the week. No, you don't like it? No. Why? Because you know that I am a big fan of sometimes. <laughs> But here, I here. cannot respond sometimes. I know, I know, I know. I understand. Yeah. And we will we will tell everybody why our vote is going to yes. Come on. Come on. It's going to yes. not even a question. Not even yeah. A question. yeah, exactly. You see 74%, sometimes 23. I'm sure because they also get used to the idea that sometimes is the best answer. It's a good <laughs> it's a good option. <laughs> Okay, so the, 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 the episode is very full, full of surprises. So, uh, Emilio, you have to announce the, the guest. Yeah, in, for, the for the next five minutes, I will be announcing the guest. Because if you need to announce our, our tonight's guest, you need five minutes at least. At least, exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, many of, the, of our friends uh, know her pretty much. Come on, 99% of our audience yeah. know, uh, know our tonight's guest uh, very well, I'm sure. But let her, yeah, let her appear on the screen. Yeah, so, Lydia. Lydia. Hello. Hello, 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 Lydia. So Thank nice to so see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. This is a wonderful, I mean, you see that Lydia became very professional with, uh, with webinars. You see how... How fancy is the background? It, it's reminding a little bit the old Macintosh, right? I mean, the background that you had on the screen of the Mac. So yeah, how are you, I'm Lydia? impressed with your backgrounds. They're <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> And I see Emilio's, I sorry, I saw Jackie even twice on my screen. So I am impressed. <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, this will increase, Lydia. In a few minutes, he will okay. appear five times. Don't be okay. scared. It's always Jeffrey. Don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, what, how, can, how can we uh, pre, uh, announce Lydia? So, Lydia, of course, is very well known by everybody. But let me just remind you that she's, um, first, a full professor of dermatology in Poland. Second, I think that she's still the president of the Polish Dermatologic Society, mm. or if not, she, yes, she's still the president. She's an executive board member of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venereology, an executive board member of the International Dermoscopy Society, a board member of the American Academy of Dermatology. Shall I continue? <laughs> <laughs> you But, know everything. I am impressed. Yeah, well, But come on. Much, she's just a good friend. But she's much more friend. than this, she's a wonderful person and a good friend. And she's definitely, I mean, the queen of trichoscopy. Uh, uh, not only trichoscopy, of course, but since today we're speaking about trichoscopy, uh, many, maybe, I would say, most of the things that we know today, if not most, a big percentage, a large percentage of the things we know today are thanks to her and her continuous efforts throughout the last years. So, Lydia, it's a great honor and pleasure that you are here with us tonight. 
you know, your introduction is so great. I am all red on my face. What can I say? <laughs> we developed, uh, you developed a little bit of rosacea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let me tell you also, uh, I, I met Lydia, I mean, quite a number of years ago, right? Uh, and uh, at that moment, uh, you still didn't start with your, let's say, interest in trichoscopy. So we were uh, meeting for the use of the Moscow in the regular uh, uh, arena like with mental lesions and so on. And I mean, in the last, uh, I suppose, in the last only 15, 15 years, uh, basically uh, Lydia together with a, a very nice group of uh, colleagues from uh, her department, she, they developed a, uh, an incredible field of application of demoscopy. And nowadays, well, as we said before, we cannot uh, uh, examine the scalp of any patient without our demoscope. So it's impressive. Not even mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you for, for you for, for being so nice, but it's really work done by many people, by Antonella Tosti, by Francesco Lacaruba, by Professor Micali, by Maria Miteva. I can go on and on and on. Um, Bianca Piracini, uh, um, Michaela Starace. You know, it's, it's really a huge list of people who became interested. And just because you were talking about when we met first, it's not to show that we are so old, but we met first uh, during a meeting in Poland in 2006. And um, you were g giving a course on uh, tumor dermoscopy at the time. And I chose for myself a nonsense lecture about dermoscopy, sky is the limit. And this is when I was talking about hair for the first time. And we knew nothing at the time. There was, uh, I think, one paper by Elizabeth Ross or, or not even. Uh, so it was, it's really a, a long time ago and a lot, a lot uh, has changed in dermoscopy. Definitely, definitely. And uh, as is our uh, attitude uh, in this um, happy hour webinar, we like to present a paper from, from Lydia, right, Emilio? What the did you paper choose? of the week. The yes. paper of the week. Before I tell you what I chose, Sebastiano has to show, has to yes. run with yes. a special intro. A special intro. Sebastiano, go, 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 go. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Ben. Yes, yes, yes. So, paper of the week for, for this week. Um, yeah, I will tell you about the paper of the week, but uh, before um, showing the paper of the week, uh, let's play a little bit with our audience. I will sh show you two photographs, A mm -hmm. and B. And of course, I will also show you dermoscopy. Come on, don't be afraid. I will show you dermoscopy mm -hmm. of A and B. And here comes the question for the audience. So, uh, Sebastiano, can we launch, please, the question? The question is, which is alopecia areata? A, B, both, or none? Which is, uh, I would say, a quite straightforward question. Yeah. yeah. And let's see what the audience is going uh, to reply to this question. Yeah, uh, I see I cannot vote. No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> okay. You cannot vote and you also cannot speak about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, you know, I did not know the pictures before. So Yes, of course you didn't. <laughs> so, uh, you see that the majority of the answers goes for A. Uh, mm -hmm. And the second most voted answer is, in fact, the correct one. Because the correct answer is none. So none of these photographs corresponds to alopecia areata because both of them correspond to a different diagnosis for which we will speak in the next very few minutes. And this is trichotillomania, uh -huh. which is a very frequent, uh, I don't know how to classify it, uh, uh, cutaneous disorder, psychological, uh, you know, mental disorder. You, you know, I, I classify it as a also dermatological disorder because 
historically it has been classified as psychiatric and the psychiatrists have made a definition but of course they see only the patients with the psychiatric disease and we the dermatologists we have many patients who have no psychiatric abnormality but they pull their hair they're aware of pulling their their hair and uh, it's a kind of habit so what we can diagnose with uh, trichoscopy is mainly we can diagnose uh, the effect of pulling hair. We cannot diagnose the mental uh, status of the patient. Uh, but uh, so I, I believe that a majority of the patients which we see in dermatology, they have no psychiatric disorder. Yeah. So yeah. I would say it's a dermatological disorder or, or also a dermatological disorder. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's interesting that the majority of people voted for A for alopecia areata, and this is explained by uh, the findings that I will show you in a minute from uh, this very nice paper from uh, the group of Lydia that was published uh, very, very, very recently in Acta uh, Dermatovenerologica. By the way, Jeppe, again today, we do not present a paper from Dermatology Practical and Conceptual, but we want to remind the yes. viewers that the best journal is Dermatology Practical. <laughs> this is very bad. Lydia, you have to, to say to your to young, young colleagues to, to uh, submit to DPC. Sure, well, with pleasure. I think one of our papers was rejected, so but uh, we will we will we will improve. We will improve. <laughs> By the way, one of the of the many tasks that Lydia had and I forgot to mention because the, the link is the list is very long, is that she's also uh, associate editor of a very important dermatological journal, which is the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venereology. So in this paper, which was in fact a review paper, they screened all the available literature, starting from the initial search of 310 papers, which is quite a lot. Yeah. And eventually including um, uh, 13 studies in the quantitative uh, synthesis. And by the way, the results were quite uh, interesting and are summarized uh, in this table. To make it easier for you to read this table, I would say that the most frequent, so if we focus on prevalence or sensitivity, the most frequent features are the one that we know pretty well. So broken hairs, I'm sure that if I ask somebody which is the most, fre the most frequent finding in trichotillomania, the answer would be broken hairs at different lengths. And of course, this is correct and also uh, confirmed by the findings of this study. But if, we, if you look at the column of specificity, you see that broken hairs and black dots, which are both very frequent, in terms of specificity, they are not really high, meaning that, yes, they are frequent, but they don't point towards trichotillomania only. Hmm. Uh, in contrast, if you look the six or seven features above, you will see that the sensitivity is not so high, but the specificity is impressive, is almost... 100% or very close to 100%. So I would like just to go through them with, together with you, just to remind to our attendees these seven features that probably are not so well known as broken hairs are, and uh, were very well highlighted by uh, this feature. So this is the image we saw at the beginning, and this is probably why uh, this was not so easy to diagnose, because here we can see black dots which we saw at the beginning, which is not specific for trichotillomania. It's compatible with trichotillomania, but not 100% specific. The specific features are the one we're going, we're going to see now. They are seven, uh, and there is a very nice uh, image also in, in the paper. In fact, this is the image that I used in order to show you these features. So first, hook hairs these partly coy hairs with a hook-like appearance. This is number one. What is a um, hook? What is a hook? Hook, like hook. the pirates. Like the, or, the uh, pirates, the pirate. If, if you want to uh, pull something, you can use a hook to pull it. Ah, yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. Yeah, fine. That's the hook. Then coil hairs. Again, uh, you see this very nice example of coil hairs. Uh, with a jagged ending. Then the V sign, uh, when two or more hairs uh, emerging from one follicle are pulled simultaneously and break at the same length above 
a scalp surface. The V-sign is the third a specific feature of trichotillomania. Then hair powder, which is practically it corresponds, Lydia, if I'm not wrong, to the complete destruction of the hair shaft. That's why we see uh, uh, the, just the remnants of the totally damaged uh, hair shaft. This is number four. Number five, this is very important. Yeah. In my view, the trichoptilosis, so this splitting uh, of the hairs at the distal end. Number six, I like it very much. I Flame. know that you like it, Jerby, too. Flame. Flame. I like it. Flame. I like, it. Uh, Flame. like yeah. burnt, as if they were burned by fire. Uh, that's very nice. And finally, these tulip hairs, which are very short with a, uh, with a hyperpigmentation in at the distal uh, ending. So these, these seven features are not that much frequent, but the, when, when present, they are highly specific of trichotillomania. Uh, and I think, Lydia, and that's for you now, that I found uh, an image in which we can see almost all of these seven features together. So uh, I don't know if you agree, but uh -huh. in this image we can see many of these seven yeah. features. Huh? Yeah. Definitely, yes. Uh, I think I cannot point to the, the, the hairs, yeah. but uh, if we see a huge number of broken hairs, even though and they're in a chaotic arrangement, uh, this is a hint also for trichotillomania because we can see some broken hairs also in tinea capitis or in alopecia reata, but if there's such a chaos as you see it in this image, this is one of the things to, to take into consideration. Uh, the black dots, if you pull the hair at the, and it breaks at the level of the scalp, then the black dots will develop. And as we know, the black dots are most characteristic for alopecia reata, but they can be present in uh, also in uh, trichotillomania. One feature which we were not talking about, but it may be very misleading, are the uh, are the exclamation mark hairs. Because exclamation mark hairs, one or two or three, may be present also in uh, in patients with trichotillomania. But if there is a field of view full of uh, of uh, exclamation mark hairs, this points to alopecia reata. So, so this was just another thought. But yes, in this image, we see multiple broken hairs, multiple black dots. I am looking for a hook hair. Hook, um, hook, I don't know, but coiled, we can we can see here. Yes, coiled, definitely, we can see here. Uh, Flame hairs, we can also. Yeah, maybe I will just mention one thing. It is different from the circle hair, or as we sometimes call it, the pigtail hair. Because the circle hair, these are nicely regrowing hair with a very pointed end. And as you mentioned before, the cold hairs in trichotillomania, they develop because you pull the hair and it's like with the present ribbon. The, the, the part which is um, localized closer to the scalp will, uh, will coil irregularly. So, uh, so this is the typical feature of the cold hairs in trichotillomania. The V sign, I am looking for it, maybe in the mid part of the image, I think. Maybe you here. Maybe here there yes. is a sign. Maybe, maybe here as well. Maybe also a little bit lower on the left side, I, I would say. We could discuss the V sign is if there are two hairs in one follicle unit, we all remember that there are two or three, sometimes four hairs per follicle unit. And if you pull both hairs to the same direction with the same power, then they will break at the same level. And what will be left will be this V sign. These are two hair shafts which are broken at the same level in the same follicular unit. So this is what you see here as well. Hair powder is really better visible in, um, in higher magnification. But let me look together with you. Uh, I think that's here, maybe here in this. Yeah, we could discuss hair powder, as you mentioned. This is hair which is totally destroyed by the force of pulling, uh, but some uh, remains residue of the hair is lost. Sometimes it still forms a kind of uh, hair shaft uh, structure, but in most cases it's just dis distributed around the hair follicle. And uh, this we see sometimes 
especially this will this will uh, fade away when the patient is uh, washing his his hair so also i prefer when the patient comes in without washing the hair for two or three days because some features are better visible so if somebody's coming in and he washed his hair this morning, then of course I will perform trichoscopy. But if somebody is asking me whether or not he or she should wash their hair, I prefer a three-day non-washed hair because some features are better visible. Trichoptylosis. Trichoptylosis is, is important because trichoptylosis are split ends. So split ends, uh, everybody who has long hair has experienced split ends ends but uh, split ends at the end of long hair is not an issue uh, it may be an issue cosmetically but not in terms of health because as the hair grows and let's say it grows one month per uh, one centimeter per month it gets older as it grows but if we see split ends in very short hairs, and this is what we see in trichoscopy, we should be worried because this is a sign of something going wrong. And trichotillomania is one of the most common uh, causes of trichoptylosis. Flame hairs, you have shown it very nice. It's a hair residue. If you pull, the other end will fold like a wavy structure uh, and form a flame hair. And the tulip hair, we have we have we have hi hypothesized that the tulip hair is a hair shaft which is broken diagonally, and this is why this uh, hyperpigmentation appears at the distal end. So. Uh, oh, nice. um, now I we have not shown all the features, but maybe uh, we can see a uh, tulip hair on the in the top part of this image. Uh, yeah. let, yes, exactly. Yeah, Lydia, Lydia, maybe yes. maybe a question from my side. Um, is it true that uh, uh, let's say most of your papers were performed with uh, uh, dermoscopy at a little bit higher magnification than the that the usual uh, ten per magnification? So then you are able to see more closely this kind of uh, 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 alterations, right? Yes, and also the first edition of the Atlas of Trichoscopy was a, with a higher magnification. So yeah. what we do for the second edition, we focus on tenfold magnification because this is what we use most commonly. Uh, of course, we make the images with the video dermoscope, so it increases the image. But most of the features are visible both in higher and lower mag magnification. You just need to be a little bit more careful in looking for the details. But yes, I fully agree with you. Uh, Which, by the way, was a question by the audience. What yes. magnification? Uh, what magnification do you usually use when um, you do hair shaft examination with a video dermatoscope? With the dermatoscope, of course, I use ten. I like using twenty now. When I was uh, younger, I used seventy because I felt that I see in more detail. Now I prefer twenty because I see a larger field of view. Sometimes, when I want to point something specific, I increase usually not more than 50 because i believe above 50 we do not see really a lot more so uh, 20 is my favorite and 50 sometimes if i want to see something in very detail lydia how is the pool test in trichotillomania uh, of course it's negative but uh, to be honest i don't really like the pool test because it's so non-specific i know it's it's one of the major and uh, most known way, uh, ways of uh, examining hair in uh, hair diseases but still even though in alopecia reata it should be positive or an intelligent effluvium it should be positive when you catch the wrong moment, it will also be negative. So anyhow, in trichotillomania, always negative. Uh, just to remind the people who are listening to us and who are not interested so much in hair, a pull test is when you pull the hair and you, for example, I don't know, 20 or 30 hairs, it depends on the technique. And then you look how many hairs are left in your hand and if they're some people say more than five, then it's the tell, pull, tell, the pull test is positive. Um, usually you see no hair in your hand or one or two, then this pull test is negative. So it means it's a kind of 
ease of uh, uh, of getting of pulling out the hair and of course in trichotillomania you need to really pull hard to 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 get some hair and they will not be pulled together with a bulb they will be pulled and they will be broken uh, in the mid part or at the level of the scalp which yeah. will result in a black dot yeah and Another question is what is coiled hairs, but Lydia explained earlier yeah. what is coiled hairs, so we can skip it. Another one is are yellow dots observed in trichotillomania? And there is a second part in this question, which is very interesting. But first, Lydia, if you like to re respond, if there are yellow dots? Basically, no, because a yellow dot is an empty hair follicle. And usually if you break a hair at the level of the scalp, then uh, what will be left is a black dot. And then a hair should regrow. However, if no hair regrows for whatever reason, sometimes because of the overlap of two diseases, then sometimes you may see some spares, uh, yellow dots, but if there's no overlap with androgenic alopecia or another disease, then the patient should not have yellow dots. Which, by the way, you already mentioned the second part of the question, which is very interesting. Yazid said that sometimes we observe uh, trichotillomania and alopecia areata together. So the overlap. Uh, so you think that this is frequent? To yes, it's frequent. I, yes, I don't know how it works. Uh, technically, but uh, I have seen uh, many patients, especially, I would say, uh, very young adults and uh, and older children. I have the impression that alopecia areata is causing some increased interest in hair mm -hmm. and maybe or, or some stress associated with hair. And this uh, also may lead to hair pulling. Of course, nobody knows what comes first, but uh, for me, the logic is this way. So first alopecia areata and then trichotillomania. And this overlap I have, uh, I have seen quite a couple of times. So it's, yes, it's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then another question is, uh, uh, if, okay, if, if we can recommend a brand name for dermatoscope, um, uh, and a brand name for video dermatoscope, but I would say it's better to avoid brand names. Uh, but another similar question uh, is... Can I answer this question without sure. mentioning a brand? Uh, what I learned by buying various dermoscopes is that I always like to take a dermoscope in my hand and check myself how I see it, because sometimes even with the best dermoscope, it may not be good for you. It sometimes uh, because I have glasses, sometimes I have shadow on the skin when I when I look to the dermoscope. So it's always good to go to a conference when there were there um, uh, dermoscopes which you can take into your hand and and see how you see uh, with the with the certain dermoscope. So even though we have some of our favorites, uh, it's good to see what you buy before you buy. Great. There is another question saying yeah. uh, if there is a dermatoscope that you can use for uh, 20 times magnification, I think that there is no handheld dermatoscope no. with 20 times magnification. The only option is with a video, with a video dermatoscope. And this is are, my knowledge as well. Yeah, there are a few questions uh, about uh, treatment. So, which is the first choice treatment of uh, trichotillomania? How do you yeah. treat trichotillomania? Uh, <laughs> So, and, and I, I also have to add an, another point to this question because it happens often, at least to me, I'm sure to you even, even more often. When you examine the patient, you see the signs that you want to see for trichotillomania, you are quite confident because as you explained in the paper, some signs are very specific for trichotillomania. Mm -hmm. And then the patient refuses categorically that there is no way that this is the reason of the alopecia. So what, what do you do? I will start with the situation which you just mentioned. It happens quite rarely, but it happens to happen to me that uh, the, the patient was seeing multiple doctors uh, and then came to me and I, you know, I used the dermoscope and I was sure it was trichotillomania. And uh, we were having this, this discussion, as you mentioned, and these patients never came back to my office. So uh, I'm not sure why either they believe, still believe I'm wrong or they did not want to admit that I am right. I, I'm not sure why. 
But in most cases, if the patient has no psychiatric disorder, and this is this, this is a majority of my patients, so of course I discuss the problem, and uh, uh, the patient is trying to avoid pulling hair, which is very difficult because if it's a habit, and you watch, I don't know, Netflix, and you keep, you know, pulling your hair even uh, non non consciously, then then it's really difficult. Uh, I have some good experience with ACC. This is an acetylcysteine, uh, and usually I start with 600 milligram. Uh, some of the authors suggest up to 2400. I usually start uh, stop at uh, 1200, meaning two times 600. Don't ask me how it works, but yes, it works, and there's no explanation in the literature. I have not found. Uh, uh, and acetylcysteine is ACC. It's like you have for for cold, for cough, uh, and um, for uh, decreasing the velocity of uh, of uh, the mucosal okay. secretion. Now we're going into laryngology. I I'm not yeah. so familiar with the with the nomenclature. So, and and it works quite okay. Something what is available, and uh, my patients have mixed feelings, and not not every patient uh, got this mm, this uh, machine. There is a band you can have on your hand, and it will give it will make a noise every time you put you take it, your hand. <laughs> ah, that's so nice. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's it's an alarm, in a, an alarm, you know. Yeah, or, it's, or it's like a buzzer, you know. It's, you, you feel okay. So sometimes you can have it on silent, but it's a buzzer. So you when you are in, your, in an office, you'll notice, but other people will not notice. It's uh, very expensive. The ones with the, which I have uh, looked at are more than 100 or more than $200. So I'm not really sure it's worth the money. But some of my patients were quite happy and they said they, they, they you know, develop new habits with, with this machine. Do you know if this is available in, uh, in, in other countries? So it's, or... It's American, and they have bought it through via uh, via oh, internet. By the internet. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, so what else? Many questions. Many so, questions. Did you did you identify any specific GP? Uh, there are several for the treatment, but we replied yeah. about treatment. Yes. Um, uh, what about trichoscopy in case of eyelashes versus scalp? Yeah. Um, Same. Say, it's say, say it again, the question. Uh, what about trichoscopies in for eyelashes? Yeah, it's, it's the same. You will find the same features. Uh, is, sometimes they are even better visible because uh, because the eyelashes are, are a little bit farther apart and they are shorter. Uh, sometimes they are better visible, uh, both for eyelashes and for eyebrows. Just remember for the eyelashes, do not use alcohol, uh, immersion fluid, because it may be dangerous. Uh, if I use immersion, uh, I st try to use no immersion fluid. But if I do, I use uh, uh, 0.9% saline. So just a physiological, you know, a physiological solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you biopsy in case you are in doubt with alopecia areata? Do you biopsy? Yes. I biopsy in alopecia areata <clears throat> uh, for two reasons. First, if I am in doubt. Second, if I have doubts whether or not the patient has hair follicles. Because in alopecia areata, we rarely talk about it, but in alopecia areata, there's a follicular dropout. A hair, a hair follicle which is not working will uh, will become atrophic and it cannot produce a hair anymore, even though you introduce the, a good treatment. So sometimes I use uh, a biopsy in alopecia areata to first check whether the hair follicles are intact, and second, whether there are inflammatory infiltrates, because we now have uh, more possibilities in terms of immunosuppressive treatment, especially the JAK inhibitors. But I believe, and this is not scientifically proven, I believe that if there are no uh, signs of inflammation and no inflammatory infiltrates anymore, it's a stable phase of the disease, then we are probably not likely to be effect with, uh, effective with immunosuppressive treatment. 
So answer your, answering your question, yes, I am performing a biopsy quite often. Uh, there is a question. Do you sometimes do the test in which you shave the broken, uh, sh uh, the bro the broken hairs and have a short follow-up? Uh, no, no, I don't. I'll just mention one more thing about the biopsy. You know, the, I am really lucky because we have a, an extremely good dermatopathologist and uh, uh, who can, you know, see the, the fine issues related to hair. So uh, for everyone who wants to work uh, more specifically with hair, it's good to have a cooperation with a pathologist who is really understanding the, the issue of hair. I do not do the shaving. Uh, you will see whoever works with hair. For a person with hair loss, especially for women, every single hair is of extreme importance. If you shave, if I tell the patient I will shave the hair, the patient will never come back. So, so no, I don't. Mm. So you do a punch. What do you do? I do a I do a punch. I do a like I don't know three millimeter punch. Maybe it should be. Uh, okay. Four millimeter. Four millimeter is the standard to have the sufficient number of hair follicles. But I try to do it in an area, if possible, which is not so visible to the patient to not, uh, you know, cause any problems. And then if you make a stitch, then it's almost in invisible. Yeah. yeah, I would say, Jebi, we we uh, we took yeah. the vast majority of the questions, yes. but Lydia uh, was not able even to breathe, and of course she was not able to, yes. drink, to drink a little let, bit of the, let me just of the wine. So let me just show you this case because exactly. this is still referring to uh, trichoscopy because we solved this problem because we have our dermatoscope in our hand. Uh, this lady came to us um, about one year ago with a, a, a long story of previous treatments for this uh, um, uh, scaling and erythematous scaling dermatosis of the scalp, only located on the scalp. It was uh, treated uh, with topical steroids for many years. Then she started to develop a little bit of uh, uh, what, what is looking like a scar in alopecia as well. Um, so this is the clinical findings, and this is what we can see dermoscopically in just one little piece of the, of the scalp. And now my question should come, Sebi. So what about the diagnosis? Psoriasis, folliculitis decalvans, tinea, discoid lupus, what do you think? Uh, Lydia, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can just say one is correct. <laughs> one is correct, yeah. Yeah, one is correct. Yes, um, of course, immediately after we uh, gave a look with our dermatoscope, we decided to do an additional test, which is very easy, immediate, which solved the problem without performing a biopsy. So let's see how uh, our friends were replying to the diagnostic question. Sebi, let's have a look. Well, yeah, it's quite balanced. Yeah, 23% psoriasis, 15 for uh, folliculitis, 34, a little bit the winner for tinea, and 28 for discoid lupus. Yeah. So what, what is your the, the diagnosis, Lydia, here? Well, I would go with the majority. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like uh, being a millionaire, you go with the majority. <laughs> and why, why will I go with the majority? Yeah. I would go with the majority because of the uh, comma hairs or they're the more the bent hairs or let's look at the general picture. In the general picture, you will see uh, some broken hair, some areas with no hair. Uh, and uh, in the mid part, you will see a bent hair. Let's say it's a yeah. common hair. You can see also a, a little bit of a zigzag hair. It's yeah. and, uh, yes, That's exactly. It. This is the place where, where you show, which you show. Also yeah. another zigzag hair at uh, six o'clock on the lower part of the yes here. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can even call it borderline uh, Morse code hairs because it has a yeah. whitish whitish area uh, so so basically uh, sufficient uh, features to call it um, uh, tinea capitis also yeah. some redness some inflammation but I would like to to point to one thing uh, because we were 
saying for a long time that perifollicular scaling is typical for lichen planar pilaris. But this is a this is a case which shows that it is not always the case here. And the left side of the image, you will see some perifollicular scale, perifollicular scaling. And if there is a lot of scaling, especially if you use a polarized uh, dermoscope, you can see some perifollicular accumulation. It, so it's it's not very specific, but uh, usually if you see a normal scalp and only perifollicular scaling, this may be indicated for Diacontana pilaris, but if you see a scalp like this, this is non-specific. Yeah. So yeah, what, is a question was, which my, is, was my uh, diagnosis correct? Yes, your diagnosis was perfect. And this is what this is what we uh, also noticed. And then, of course, we did immediately a microscopic test, uh, micro microscopic examination of the scales, and we found. Ah, I didn't show you the. Ah, sorry, uh, I I didn't show you the uh, result of the microscopic wow. examination which is very, very typical for tinea capitis, lots of uh, spores, some IFAS, IFAS and uh, so Everything was, so was solved and the lady was uh, okay in, uh, let's say, uh, after one month of treatment with Grisio Fulvin, everything was uh, perfect. Very good. Can, can I just comment comment on this one one thing? I think it is important to say that uh, when you treat a patient with grisofulfin or whatever you use for the tina capitis, the trichoscopy signs will disappear first and then the mycological culture becomes negative. Mm -hmm. So uh, trichoscopy is very good for making diagnosis. It is not good for choosing the point for discontinuation. As long as you still have the trichoscopy features, it means that the culture will be positive, but then after the trichoscopy features are gone, I start performing mycological culture and then I treat until, until it's negative. That's very That's, important, very important point, very important. Yeah, it's yeah. very important because, I mean, uh, it's, it's and, and anyhow, it's uh, one or two weeks uh, uh, of additional treatment will, uh, will be safer with respect to stop before the, uh, the disease is gone. Yeah. Nice case, uh, very nice case. A clinically relevant question uh, that I don't want to uh, to miss is if you use uh, if you wet the scales, if you use liquid uh, in order to examine the scales on the scalp, or if you prefer dry dermoscopy. Uh, it's a question to me. Uh, I always start with dry dermoscopy in every case, and then I use liquid. And in most cases, I use an alcohol solution. Uh, for uh, for uh, examination because you see a little bit different things with uh, dry and a little bit different oh. with with fluid. Great, definitely this is the best the best way to do. Yeah, yeah, very good, very nice. So, wow, wow, we were running for forty five minutes. We did yes. not let Lydia even to take a breath. <laughs> but now, now you, Lydia you told me to have a glass of wine, so of, yeah. you know, it's, yes. it's, glass of wine. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Cheers, cheers, <laughs> cheers. Uh, but now, Lydia, you can take a breath because now you know what's going to happen. JP will connect his telephone with. Yes, that's the, why. Uh, that's why I have this. Uh, in order to play with us a level of you dermoscopy. Yes. Okay. Because we, we, we decided here to try to help uh, JP improve his classification in the game. Exactly. So exactly. every week we play uh, with him, uh, you know, a level, uh, because he, uh, you yeah. were, your classification was what? You were 2,000. <laughs> yes, 2000. I was, I, I'm very bad. So I'm trying to develop a better score in the Udemoscopy uh, app. So uh, last uh, in the last episode, we spoke about uh, the training part of the, of the app in which you can find many levels in which you can play and you can uh, accumulate uh, uh, points uh, for the ranking, but also you can uh, make points also by, by uh, adding your own cases in the, in, the, in the part which is called Play Live, 
which is here. So you can make points either if you uh, upload cases, your own cases, or if you respond, if you give your diagnosis for the uh, cases which are, which are uh, just uploaded by other colleagues. So as you can see here, uh, in total, until we launched uh, the uh, Play Live uh, part of the, of the app, we have more than 7,000 cases uploaded by our wow. colleagues, which is impressive. Yeah? And you can see, of course, that there are so many cases. Of course, many of them are easy. For example, this one. What do you think, Emilio? What should we say? Uh, that's, that's straightforward. Seborrheic keratosis. Seborrheic keratosis, yes. So as you see, I, found, I, I got three, 30 points, Emilio. Bravo, JP. I'm improving. And of course, uh, the uh, total, total number of colleagues who uh, responded to this case voted for seborrheic keratosis. Of course, this is a very brand new case. So only 25, as you can see here, only 25, top, top right, 25 colleagues uh, responded to this case. But let me show you a couple of cases which I put in my preferred cases list. Uh, in which you can see uh, uh, very interesting things. For example, let me show you, show you here this case, which in my view, it's, it's a little bit, uh, of course, in my, in my estimation, it's quite, uh, it's quite a suspicious case, but looking dermoscopically, you see that there is a papillomatous part of this lesion. Huh? So, Emilio, what do you think is... Is your, what is your impression here? Without your introduction, I would definitely go for melanoma first. Okay. Yeah. 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 But but, but, but now with your introduction, I can make sev second optimistic thought. Second choice. Second choice, which is of course dermal needles, right? But this is a uh, this is the back of a, a thirty year old uh, gentleman. So I voted for melanoma. This yeah. is my diagnosis. But I, if you if we check. The diagnosis, ah, okay. yeah, you okay. see that still 32% of the people voted for the dermal needles. Here you see again this uh, icon um, uh, of this uh, uh, academic guy. So this is the majority of the uh, 100 experts that we invited to participate. Who no, no, we invited the 100 experts yeah. which have the highest scores. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it's democracy. Uh, Exactly. Let's say, and they are changing. So uh, the experts are those who are the top 100 uh, in the in the general ranking. Okay, and of course, maybe it, it can change. The, this 100 list can change uh, from time to time. Uh, and here you see also the microscope sign. Eh? So here is where the uh, the colleague who uploaded the case was also adding the histopathologic diagnosis. So here we have clear-cut answer because there was a histopathologic confirmation. So 55% of the votes, uh, the, um, the experts and the uh, histopathologic diagnosis. Uh, but for example, let me show you another case here in which also the diagnosis was a little bit not so easy. So this is the clinical, not perfectly in focus, but still here we have another image. I suppose it's the shoulder of a young lady. And here you see the dermoscopy. It's not clear cut. I mean, on my no. one is more, uh, is less blurred. But still, we have a couple of possibilities, right, Emilio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind? Melanoma. Okay. Ker Seborrheic keratosis. Yes. The mainly the differential. Okay. Here in the notes is written that uh, she, this lady had a previous melanoma, and she reports itching and modification for about two weeks. So my vote went to seborrheic keratosis, as you can see here. Now let's look at the answers of the colleagues. As you see, 130 colleagues replied, okay? And you see the, the situation. Eh? So there is no histopathologic confirmation. So yeah. what we learn from this case is, first, this is a difficult, difficult case. Yeah, 30% of the votes went to melanoma. The winner, but not 
uh, an impressive win was for Nevus, 44%, and also the majority of the experts voted for a Nevus, 3% for Basel Cell, and 18%, like my vote, went to seborrheic keratosis. Who is wrong? Who is right? Well, I mean, for the moment, since we don't know the answer, everybody can be happy. <laughs> yes, exactly. But here you see, uh, I mean, of course, this is, um, uh, in, you know, in some way, the, the, the learning experience is uh, a little bit philosophic in, yeah. in the play life uh, system, you know, because here I can immediately understand that uh, it, this is not an easy case. I'm still convinced that most, most probably this is a seborrheic keratosis, but I also learned from this case that diagnosis is very often a democratic procedure, but not always. Yeah. Huh? Not always a democratic procedure. Huh? Sometimes the majority is wrong. Uh, of course, we have experienced it also in uh, in uh, politics, you know, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you just uh, one last case. For example, this one. Here, I'm pretty sure about the diagnosis. What do you think, Emilio? Yeah, this must be a seborrheic keratosis. Seborrheic keratosis, but a difficult one, right? Yeah. Yes. So yes. I voted for seborrheic keratosis, but... Let's look again. You see, here we have the histopathologic confirmation. This is a seborrheic keratosis. And as you can see, the democracy was uh, wrong. But also the aristocracy was wrong here. Also the aristocracy was wrong. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. see, 76% voted for melanoma, including the experts, including the majority, of course, of the experts. And only 12% voted for the correct diagnosis. Yeah. So... Uh, in my view, this is a quite nice experience. Yeah? It's not only like in the training, in the training part, uh, you know, answering uh, the diagnosis and having uh, immediate feedback. Here, it's a kind of more philosophical of way. Course, of course, because you have the, the you have also the information of what your colleagues are thinking about exactly about the same lesion. Exactly. This is very interesting and intuitive and very, very, very yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, very good. Okay. Very so, good. Uh, if you if you didn't just download your demoscopy app and you will have fun for sure. Lydia, do you do you practice a little bit with uh, the your demoscopy app? No, oh, you know, it's uh, I more than practice because I was so jealous when you made this uh, application, uh, yeah. uterinoscopy. So I made with a couple of friends uh, M trichoscopy, which is basically a copy of your application, <laughs> yeah. but it is about trichoscopy. It's not so as advanced as your as your uh, uh, application, but also it's available both for uh, for uh, iPhone and for other phones. So. Yeah. Yeah. How, how is the name of the app? I want to download it. How is the name? M trichoscopy. Trichoscopy. Okay. M trichoscopy. M stands for mobile. Okay. Trichoscopy with no space. Okay. And also, you and everyone who is listening, I invite you to take a look at my YouTube channel where I was also talking about trichotillomania and some other hair issues. So everyone is invited and thanks a lot. And I took this moment when you were talking to look at the at the list of participants and I would like to take this opportunity to say hello to everyone. I see many friends here. So, so thank you for being with us. Lydia, you, uh, today we have 275 people connected, and in my view, this is the most 280, uh, successful. 281, I see. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's an, an impressive number, and this is the most uh, successful episode until now. Thank you. Uh, so you have growing. to be here every Sunday, Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> I will be happy to be with you. <laughs> Maybe but, the other side of the camera next yeah. time. Yeah. There are still still things that we need to do and we have only five minutes. So let's yeah. go very uh, quickly. Lydia, if you like to stay with us for five more minutes just to sure. see the, the okay. final part of the, uh, of the show. First of all, we have to show the cases sent by the participants, just a couple of cases because we don't have time. But before showing the cases from the participants, of course, of course, of course, of course, a necessary yes. part of the show is to show 
uh, the gift from Penelope. Penelope, our Penelope. Just remind, just uh, let's remind that Penelope is uh, one of the, our most, uh, let's say, uh, frequent uh, uh, guests in, in 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 the in this uh, webinar, and she started to uh, to uh, send us this kind of. Uh, of very interesting uh, uh, periods of cases. He's yeah. a great colleague, obviously, but she's also an artist. Come on, this yeah, is not yeah. simple. This is this has definitely an artistic, an artistic part. So, eh, look at it, white <laughs> globular challenge. Uh, so I tell you that there is no chance that you can find all these six diagnoses. Yeah, yeah. No okay, chance. let me. Let me try. Let's start with the, e the easy one. Number six, I suppose, is a sebaceous hyperplasia. Then, That's a reasonable answer. Reasonable. Then, what about the BCCs? Number three or number one? I would say, I would say number one. Reasonable uh, answer. Reasonable answer. Then, um, another sebaceous stuff is going on in number two. Reasonable answer. <laughs> but number you, four, number four, I have no idea, maybe but, pilomatricoma. But you know that when somebody says reasonable answer, it means that the answer is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> number five, no idea. It's beautiful, but I have no idea what it is. Um, this is impressive. You could not even think that white globules can yeah. be present in, six, in so many different diagnoses. No, but number five world. is exceptional. No idea what it is. So yeah. If I asked you theoretically, white globules, in which kind of disease can you see them? I guess that you would respond to seborrheic keratosis, yeah. maybe squamous cell carcinoma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and look here, which is the case. So, number one is trichoblastoma. Ah, trichoblastoma, okay. Yes. Number two, sebaceous nidus in a newborn. Number three, a nodular BCC with May globules that we discussed last week. Uh, number four, gutitophus. Solid hey, nice, nice. Number five, the one that you liked very much, and I also did, Milia on post bulla scars of this a bull pelphigoid. Come this on. Is this, well, wonderful. this is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Uh, yeah. Uh, you may, uh, uh, Penelope, you have to you have to write an image letter for DPC with this case for sure. Yes, uh. come on. <laughs> and finally, number six, Sebastian's adenoma. Okay, uh, not everplash adenoma. Very nice. Thank you, Penelope, so much. Once again, once again. And then send us your case. Remember, the Moscow be happy hour uh, at gmail.com, uh, and we will try to show them. Uh, if possible, uh, at some point, we will show them. Uh, for today, I will just show you one very nice case from our friend Gary, which is simply a, a, a very, very nice example of uh, rosettes of four dots in a square. Okay. And uh, one more case from Anatoly Chalagov from Ukraine, uh, asking about uh, our opinion, especially for the uh, photograph number two, that, she, that he thinks about seborrheic keratosis as the most frequent diagnosis. And I would say, not, not yes. this one, the next one, which is this one. And I would say that uh, from what we can see in this image, I would more or less agree, but I cannot say that uh, because of the hemorrhage and the fact that the image does not cover all the lesion, I, I am not so confident, but I agree that what I see is more compatible with seborrheic keratosis. Do you agree? I agree. Very good. And now, Kahoot. Ah, before Kahoot. Before Kahoot. We have a very important announcement. Please say it. Please say it. So, guys, uh, next time we will speak about it uh, uh, with all the details. But uh, let me tell you that uh, for, uh, for the next episode and from the next episode on, Every time we do the couch session, the winner will win something practical, eh? something real. It's not only the celebration, and uh, but also something practical. And we will speak about it uh, in the next episode. Here we give you a picture in order but, to Jeffy, let you... Uh, in, the, in this photograph, why are you so sad? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not saying. Look, I'm everybody else is so happy. <laughs> 
I'm looking at something very intense. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Okay, we we will say next week what this yeah. is and what the prize of the Kahoot game will be from next week on. But for today, we will of course play our Kahoot game, and with this, we will finish um, without a specific prize, just the honor of being the winner of the Kahoot game of the Moscopy Happy Hour. So let me share my screen with you. Uh, let's go here. There we go. Do you see it? Do you confirm that you can perfect, see it? Perfect. Game pin 38181. So I see. There uh, we go. Lydia, do you know Kahoot? This is, uh, uh, we love it. It's No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm watching, you, you know, and I, I'm learning, but... You will see, you will see, Lydia, that once you see it, you will uh -huh. never be able to live without it. Okay. You will, you will have a lot of fun in your courses, because this is uh, completely online, and uh -huh. it's very easy to organize, and uh, mm -hmm. it's it's making a lot of fun, a lot of fun. As you can see, everybody, all the participants are joining mm -hmm. uh, via their uh, their phones uh, by uh, typing this pin into the application or into uh -huh. Google at the uh -huh. Google at the Kahoot uh, www Kahoot .it, mm -hmm. and then they can play. And now we will play as always, as every Sunday, with five lesions. Yes. One from each day of the previous week. So very fresh uh, cases, real cases. And we will have a winner. So I would say that we start in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Here we are. Okay, so we start with Monday, Monday uh -huh. case. This uh -huh. is the case in the middle, not the one on the right mm -hmm. side of the image, okay? Clinically, dermatoscopically, interesting, eh? Ah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice lesion. It's a nice lesion, yeah. It's a nice lesion, okay, very good. Uh -huh. And here we go for the voting. So... Basal cell carcinoma, lichenoid keratosis, Bowen's disease, or melanoma. Okay. Do you think that it's an easy one, JP? Well, it's not easy, but uh, reasonable, feasible. Can you predict the percentage of correct answers? Uh, it will be, let's say, the winner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Lichenoid keratosis. So, yes. cell keratosis in regression. Very good. Very nice. Very nice. So now let's see. Let's see. Baby, the, baby, uh, baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby. Chris, Morse code, Iride, one, two, three. Very nice. Which brings us to Tuesday. Tuesday case. This is the clinical, quite yeah. black, huh? yeah. heavily pigmented. Yeah. Vision. Okay. This is the dermoscopy. Okay. Okay. And now let's go to the voting. Uh -huh. So, Tuesday case. Nivus or melanoma? Very easy. Sharp. Yeah, I think so. So, you didn't uh, play with... Uh, no, no, with exogenous uh, pigmentation. <laughs> no exogenous pigmentation today. I didn't... <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, very good. Nice, nice, nice. nice. So there, there was I, no I I feel, I, I would say that I feel a little bit pessimistic but I, because I would have voted for melanoma. Anyhow, ah, good. Really? Very nice. Yeah, because you are afraid of me. You're afraid that I'm trying to... Yeah. I don't trust you anymore so so much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> baby, okay. baby, baby. Baby, 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 baby. Baby, baby. Very good. Wednesday. 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 Can you can you measure the lesion? Can you understand which is the diameter? Three, three millimeter. Three millimeter. It's obviously on the forehead here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Dermoscopy. Hey, brilliant. Dermoscopy. And there we go. Brilliant, brilliant. I guess that you can guess the options as usually. Solar lentigo, lentigo, malignant actinic keratosis, or basal cell carcinoma. Why not? I don't even give the option of a nevus. 
Yeah. It's because not com contemplated. Nevus is not included in the differential diagnosis here. Yeah. No. Ah, I can't. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes, of oh. course, I understand very well uh, how the votes were going, um, but yes. still, not convincing benign features, in my view, in this case, uh, not convincing. Exactly. Exactly. And instead, a little bit of rhomboidal yeah. appearance of the lines. Yeah, yeah. So if you remember, in the last uh, in the last week or the previous, we also had the similar case. Uh -huh. And as we said also the previous time, we need some time to get used to the idea of early yeah. melanoma on the face is featureless. And yeah. I, I understand that we need some time in order to... Uh, to to be able to to believe it and to uh, to work th with this inverse approach and that's why we very frequently show cases like this one and that's why we will definitely do an episode for facial lesions quite quite soon very nice so uh, let's see uh, here the situation Iride came in uh, in uh, Iride. I think that Iride has been a winner in the past, if I'm not wrong. Yes, yes, I remember very well Iride. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So now let's go to Thursday. This is the clinical aspect of the Thursday case. Okay. This is dermoscopy. Okay. Okay. And now let's go to the voting. Thursday case. Very simple. Yes, sharp. Very simple. And let me tell you, who cares about the age? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the point I want to make, as you, as you understood very well. Okay. Okay, let's see. Two, one, pop. Wow. Hey, uh, you see. Uh, uh, well. Why? Because of the globules? Because of the center, in my view. Uh, show show the show again the because there is a little bit of this grayish color, but still it's this is a very symmetric lesion. Uh, we can tolerate a little bit of this grayish color. Uh, regular globules at the periphery. Yeah, globules at the periphery. Do you care? Not too much. Not too much. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, a little bit of gray color in the center is not rare on the trunk, especially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not uh, a real reason to worry about. Yeah. Okay. Ah, to be honest, I thought that this was this was easier than the previous one, but uh, I was obviously wrong. But Iride, Iride was not affected at all. Yes. Re Remain in the first position. Emmy. Okay. Ella, Emmy, Evelina, and Sebastiano. Okay. Or Sebastiano, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Which brings us to Friday case, which is a very peculiar uh, uh -huh. question that I, I, I want to I want to make. I guess that you can understand already which is the question that I want to make. Yeah. That's yeah. not a difficult one. No. That's not a difficult no. one. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Which image is polarized? A, uh -huh. B, both or none? Aha. Uh -huh. And you are not interested at all about diagnosis. No, no. <laughs> no. Which is, by the way, seborrheic Which is seborrheic yes. obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. B. The majority yes. got the correct answer. Polarized is B. We see that in the non-polarized image, which is A, the comedo-like openings, these black roundish areas, are much better seen. Yes. Uh, for seborrheic keratosis, uh, paradoxically, non-polarized dermoscopy is still a little bit better than polarized dermoscopy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, By the way, in new dermoscopy, we will have soon very, uh, yeah. very nice game, uh, very, yeah. some bonus levels with playing a little bit with this polarized and non-polarized uh, story, which is always very interesting. Which brings us to the podium. So let's go, let's go, let's go. Three, Ella, 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 Ella. Ella. Brava Ella. Two. Fiume. Fiume. Like the sea. And Iride. Iride. Brava Iride. Brava. But 
Are you sure that, that she was a winner also earlier? I think, I, th so. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Certainly, she uh, was uh, frequently in the first uh, rank in the first uh, ranking of the of the game. But if it is available, then she can appear on the screen so, so that we congratulate her yeah. and confirm that yes. in yes. fact she was a winner once again. Very good. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, Lydia, I don't know if you're still here, but... Uh, in a, ah. Sure, of course, I'm with you. Did you like it? Yes, I love it. That's great. I have to learn it. <laughs> well, okay, so, Iride, but... are you here? Show up, show up, show up. Doriana. Doriana. Congratulations. And remind us if you... Please confirm that you were a winner before. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Iride, is your name Doriana or Iride? Doriana. Doriana. Okay, where yes. you come from? I come from Italy, but where? I'm working in Sweden. Ah, in right Sweden? Now. Ah, wow. Which city? <laughs> Stockholm. Ah, che bello. Wow. Yes, very beautiful. <laughs> very, very, very hot, right? Very warm. warm yes, better. extremely hot, especially for me. I was born in Sicily. So ah, it's, in Sicily, uh, <laughs> come on. This is a disaster. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> But I'm getting used to the very uh, hilly winter time here. Yeah, so. of course, of course. But okay. Doriana, is it true that you were winner again or not? No, really. No. This is my first time. Ah, congratulations then. So Thank you were you just so uh, very close to winning some of the competitions. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Doriana, thank, thank you, you, thank you, so and, much. And, I really and, and, and congratulations it. for your for your uh, moving moving in, in the north of Europe. Very thank nice you. Choice. It's such a pleasure to have this appointment on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Doriana. Ragazia. <laughs> Lydia, we cannot thank, thank you. you enough. We cannot thank you enough. It was a, it was great. It was a great pleasure. I learned a lot. <laughs> and thank you for having me here. And thanks for the invitation. And thanks again to everyone. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Lydia. Bye bye to everybody. See you. No, niente. Siamo stati alle risate quando mi ha detto che ho fatto Italia. Ok, dove lavori? Mi ha fatto complimenti per essermi. Ah, lo potete mettere in via voce. Siamo so... <ride> mi fa troppo ridere la sua lista il microfono acceso <ride> Musica